When people think of space exploration, words like NASA and government funding might pop into their heads. Because, of course, some of the most well-known and accomplished space missions have indeed been carried out by government space programs from different countries. It seems perfectly normal to us that space is something that only world governments have the power or financing to take on. However, in recent years, it has begun to become more and more apparent that the future of space travel might in fact be privatised, and that this might be for the best. In the past, during our Cold War phase, you had two opposing superpowers, battling each other out in proxy wars, military technology, and a new frontier, space. The progress made in those days was astounding, with improvements moving faster than ever before. Government financing for space projects was in full effect and that means that the Soviets got the first man into space and a short while later the Americans got men on the moon, within the same decade. But then again, as the Cold War ended and the Soviet Union collapsed, all of a sudden the space program seemed to have dried up and with the exception of the ISS and a few other space programs and space stations, progress seems to have become slower and slower. NASA has few ambitious goals and competition is almost non-existent. We went from travelling to other bodies in space, making leaps and bounds in progress, inventing reusable manned vehicles, to testing the growth rate of a plant in low Earth orbit. Yeah. But why has interest in space dwindled so much then? Well, the answer is very simple and very disappointing at the same time. If you ask your superior to build a new rocket ship because you wanted to outdo your rival superpower and reach Mars before they did to maintain your world image and stay a step ahead of the enemy, then that might get you all the funding and approval you need, especially if you're the United States. However, if you said that you wanted to build a rocket ship in order to further advance the human race, then all you'll get is an excuse as to why they're too busy to talk to you right now and you'll get moved on to a desk job. So then, we need to expand into space. And I think the best way to do this right now is by utilizing capitalism and a new possible future business opportunity, I suppose. Asteroid mining. It is said that the first person to successfully mine asteroids will be the world's first trillionaire. This is the level of competition that is needed right now. Companies like SpaceX have helped to progress space travel significantly, but the competition just isn't there yet and the best way to progress quickly will be to forget about government funded space agencies, as progress in peacetime is seriously slow. The best method of progress will be to have different competing businesses constantly improving their asteroid mining technologies and making trillions in the process, boosting spacecraft technology and funding. The largest issue we have when it comes to cheap space travel is just a lack of raw materials and resources. Asteroid mining could fix all of these problems, whilst also providing companies with some serious motivation to compete for progress. And personally, I am excited to see this massive step in human evolution take place. Space travel is similar to early day flight. It was risky and expensive at first, but as time went on, it became cheaper, safer and more accessible and now is the most reliable and efficient method of transportation on the planet. Let's take a look at what NASA has done this last decade then. They've launched a few more satellites, sent another rover to Mars, and made a few more discoveries here and there, exoplanets and such. All of this is to be expected as a bare minimum, however, as their annual budget is $22 billion. SpaceX, however, have made massive leaps, launching their first rocket, Falcon 1, in 2008. After quickly catching up to NASA and launching satellites and many other rockets, they have improved their rocket reusability immensely, and were responsible for the first reuse of a payload fairing, the first use of a full-flow staged combustion cycle engine, 
Raptor, which is actually reusable. And all of this was done with a budget of around $1 billion for the last decade. And now, I know that NASA and SpaceX are not necessarily competitors and they're even working together in certain areas. But I'm simply contrasting how lazy government run things become and how they don't produce anywhere near the results they did in wartime. Private companies, however, can still be highly motivated to innovate, regardless of relationships between different countries. Right then, so that's the end of the video. My next video will be much, much longer than this one. This was just a sort of short side note, something I wanted to get off my chest. My next video will be about a very, very interesting topic. And it may not really be directly space related. And well, if you don't like the topic I'm going to discuss, then feel free to skip the video and wait for my next space theme video. But I think the next topic that I'm going to cover is actually quite intriguing. And it's definitely science related. So we're not going to be diverging too much, I hope. Right, I'll just come out with it. My next video will be on nuclear warfare and the science behind nuclear bombs. And I might even include some tips on how to survive a nuclear blast. And yeah, it should be an interesting video. Oh yeah, and uh, one more thing. You better subscribe.